something awesome is gonna happen. Dumber's cool stuff. Do good gaming. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dahmer's Cool Stuff, and I just uh, got back from a booster draft of Magic the Gathering that I did at my local gaming store for the cons of Takar release. I was really, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the store I went to was really nice. Um, all the people there that were playing in the tournament were, you know, I, I know some Magic the Gathering, you know, I know how the play goes and whatnot, and the how a turn goes and what attacking and you know i'm not a beginner but i was out of the loop for a lot of things and these guys that i was playing with were really nice showing me a couple things one of the guys was giving me um even a little bit of advice for what i should do with the cards that i chose i think the deck that i made which is going to be in the description down below i'm going to have it in two parts the deck that i drafted and then the cards that i got that I left out. So it has been a long time since I played Magic against other people that I did not know in a tournament style. So right now I'm going to switch cameras and actually show you guys the deck that I made along with the cards that I didn't keep. Now leave a comment down below if you thought you would do something different because I have been out of the game so much I don't know what's what. And I want to hear your guys advice and your guys input because you know, without doing that and without workshopping, so to speak, there's no way to really learn. The way the booster drafts work is you have like six or seven guys around a table or six or seven people around a table and you have three packs of cards. You open up your first card, you pick the best card that you feel like you want to do or use and then pass it to your left. And when that, and you know, you do it so on and so, so forth until the pack is done. Then you open up your second pack, repeat process, but you pass it to the right. And then when the third pack is done, you pass it to your left. Out of the 45 or so cards that you get, you make your best deck. It's recommended to make a 40 card deck, usually between 17 and 18 land and 22 and 23 creatures, depending on how you want to play. We had the three swamps for the land. We have the six forests as well, and then we have three planes. This was the first card that I pulled from my pack. The first pack I opened, first thing I'm looking at. Windswept Heath, Fetch Land, kind of got married to having doing a green and white. So then, you know, I wound up drawing three Blossom Sands which are Blossom Sands, enter play tapped, and when it enters into the battlefield, you gain a life. Tap it for green or white mana. And then I rounded out, because of need, a Jungle Hollow, which is the same thing as the Blossom Sands, except it's for black and green mana. He is the green and black Raksash, Raks, Raksasha Death Dealer, and for a Swamp and a Forest, he gets plus two, plus two till end of turn, and also with a Swamp and Forest, you can regenerate him as well. He's a 2-2 creature, and he's a rare. I wound up doing a almost all-green deck with a very little splash of white and black for the mix that I had. A lot, some of the green cards I had, I didn't like in the deck. And it was my first time, so, you know, point out in the comments below what you would have done with the deck that I made. So, with the white, we have Siegecraft, Enchanted Creature, gets plus two, plus four. Salt Road Patrol, um, two, five, and he's got Outlast, and he's a forecasting cost creature. Then we have Abzan Battle Priest, he's a three, two, with Outlast as well. That costs three colorless and the planes. For the black portion, we have Swarm of Blood Flies, which is a four colorless and one swamp creature. He's flying. Comes into play with two plus one plus one tokens on there. And whenever another creature dies, you put a plus one plus one counter on Swarm of Bloodflies. Then we have Soltiri Scavenger. Uh, the only delve card I got. I didn't want to del play delve cards because I thought I would deck myself too quick. Which was probably my undoing. <laughs> he is a 
Six casting cost. Creature, five colorless, one swamp. He's a 3 3 flyer. And then Kuru De Dreadmaul. Uh, four colorless, one swamp. He's a defender, so he can't attack. But I can sacrifice another creature and gain life equal to sacrifice creature's toughness. Sagu Archer. Reach. I like that. I wasn't going to play the morph cost on anything. Um, he's a 2 5. Seek the Horizon, which was search library for up to three basic lands, reveal them, and put them in my hand. This was probably going to be played as a late game card if I got mana screwed. Feed the Clan, which was gain five life, but it's got Ferocious. Gain ten life if you control a creature with power four or greater. This card saved my ass a couple of games. It still prevented, it only delayed the inevitable, but still. It was good to see, to get another, uh, 10 life when I played it correctly and give me hopefully enough time to turn the game around. Most of the times I didn't, but you know, it did win me two, two games. And then we had Naturalize, which was destroy target artifact or enchantments. Um, I probably should have kept these out and done another black or white creature in hindsight, but I was thinking people were going to play artifacts and enchantments and not many people did. Awaken the Bear, which is an instant. And again, creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. I got wound up getting two of those out of the draw. Um, Kintree Wardens. Um, a simple one, one, one casting cost, one, one creature, but I can regenerate him. Uh, he definitely stalled some games for me to try to bide me some time until I can get something. <laughs> then just a couple Alpine Grizzlies. They are a three casting cost creature, four, two. Um, Archer's Parapet, which was probably one of my biggest damage dealers for pluck damage. And then we finally ended with three long shot squads. Don't ask me how I wound up getting three of these guys. But they're a nice little four casting cost creature, three three, but they have Outlast, which I can always put a plus one plus one counter on it. But the thing is, each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has reach. You can see where I was kind of going with the deck. These are the cards I left behind, and this is probably where you guys are going to be like, why would you leave that behind? Um, Ash Cloud Phoenix, which is a 4-1-4 casting cross creature, but when he's turned faced up, it deals 2 damage to each player, with a kicker of, when it dies, return it to the battlefield face down, so you, you can't get rid of it. <laughs> I should have kept this card. Uh, Rugged Highlands, didn't play these guys because I wasn't playing any red. Throttle, which I probably should have put in. Uh, negative four, negative four until end of turn. I probably should have taken a naturalize out or placed one of these at least. And possibly another owl, you know, put the alabaster current in because any creature with flying was doing some pretty bad damage to me. As I said before, these are cards I didn't put in the deck. Uh, Tomb of the Spirit Dragon uh, didn't play it because I had no colorless creatures. Summit Prowler. Asban Banners, didn't want to play the artifacts in this deck. Um, Rakasha's Secret, which is target opponent discards two cards, put top two cards of your library into your graveyard. The Delve deck that kicked my ass in the last game, he, he was using a lot of discard abilities that worked on him because that's how Delve works. He also used Scaven, uh, Scout the Borders, which is reveal the top five cards of your library. Put a creature or land card from among them in your hand, put the rest into your graveyard. And then final uh, two Savage Punches, and then Tranquil Grove, which I didn't use because I wasn't having any blue. Uh, but, you know, these Grove, the uh, lands that give you a life in Booster Draft, really were helping me out. E even if it's just one life, if you get a couple of them out, that kind of negates one of the creatures. For participating, I got the uh, promotional card, Dragon Throne of Takir. Uh, he's a forecasting cost artifact. It's a foil, and it's also a variant artwork of it. Uh, equipped creature has Defender and two colorless and tap it. Other creatures you control gain Trample and get X plus X until end of turn, where X is this creature's power. And it's an equipped three. If you don't know what that is, basically, if it's taken off a creature or the creature it's attached to dies, you can pay three colorless mana of any choice and put it onto another creature you control. And then we got a nice um, token card, which one side is a demon. 
and the other side is an angel. Leave a comment down below if, um, what you would have done, because this was my first booster draft. First sanctioned tournament of any kind that I've done with this game in well over a decade. This is Dahmer's cool stuff. As always, do good gaming, and I kind of like this deck for what it could have done. I could probably tank it, uh, dink around with it a little bit and, you know, make a nice little 40 card deck and just putz around with it. And also, no, video games aren't going anywhere. They're still going to be on the channel <laughs> right now. Because of the move, I don't have access to 98% of my collection, and literally all the cards I own fit right there. Magic is nice, it's portable, my wife is into it a little bit, so it's something that we can do together at home if we don't feel like playing Minecraft or renting Destiny.